These are the Rhino pills that I ordered. Rhino 200K pills. Black Mamba Premium. The Black Panther. Time, size, <laughs> stamina. Rock solid erection, no prescription necessary. 100% natural herb. Sexual Enhancement Supplements. Dick, 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 dick. You've probably seen them behind counters of bodegas, gas stations, and liquor stores. If I take this one castle, I can have a boner for seven days. If you assume these pills were snake oil, you might be in for a surprise. This shit is effective. Oh my God, have a boner! This thing really, really works. The secret ingredients that make some of these pills actually work are just one problem with America's largely unregulated, multi-billion dollar dietary supplement industry. In this case, mislabeled sex pills have spurred public health concerns and an alleged conspiracy to defraud small businesses. Vice News took a hard look at a nationwide legal battle over dick pills. In early 2019, Brooklyn bodega manager Mook Belashabi received a mysterious letter with photos of his corner store. That's the front of the store. This one, they probably came inside. The letter alleged that Shabi was selling a sexual enhancement pill called Rhino 8 that contained an illicit product. And if he didn't pay nearly $10,000, he'd face a costly court battle. It's gonna hurt the business, got school business. It's 10,000 is a lot of, it's a lot of money to them. But the notice wasn't from the government. Rather, it was from a dietary supplement company in Texas called Outlaw Laboratory that sells a variety of vitamins and bodybuilding products online. Company saying I'm doing damage to them. There's one small business in New York doing damage to them ourselves. <laughs> Shavi started asking around and realized Outlaw's actions weren't limited to his store or even just New York. Similar demand letters were sent out in at least 12 states. And Outlaw targeted hundreds of retailers with lawsuits in federal courts across the country. Store owners on the receiving end of this litigation were not happy. My initial reaction was, F you. I think what they're doing is criminal. You ever heard the phrase litigation extortion? It's very deceptive. Basically, it's a shakedown. It's a shakedown. shakedown. It's a bullshit shakedown lawsuit. I don't even know how many letters these lawyers sent out, but I would not be surprised if it numbered in the thousands. My understanding is Robert Taller is the mastermind. He's the one who came up with the suit. Whenever you are called a scumbag, there is a presumption that you are. We have every right to file this lawsuit, and I think everyone will be better off for it. Robert Taller specializes in dietary supplement litigation. For the past year and a half, he's been filing sexual enhancement-related cases on behalf of Outlaw Laboratory. These are some of the examples that we've been able to obtain as part of our investigation. You have images of females, apparently in the middle of or orgasm. A lot of animal themes. I remember seeing these products in liquor stores and kind of didn't think anything about it. But in reality, it's a national criminal conspiracy taking place in front of everyone's face. Turns out it's not some ancient herbal secret that makes some of these pills effective, but instead the power of modern pharmacology. There's basically a black market of people mislabeling pharmaceuticals, namely sildenafil, the active ingredient in Viagra, and tadalafil, the active ingredient in Cialis, labeling them as natural supplements. Ask your doctor. Ask your doctor. Ask your doctor about Viagra. Drugs like Viagra and Cialis aren't available over the counter in the United States. The Justice Department has prosecuted people for importing large quantities of erectile dysfunction drugs with the intent of repackaging them as dietary supplements, which can be sold without a prescription. Drugs are regulated by the FDA. There is no process like that for supplements. So people can easily lie, label something a supplement, and sell it until they're caught. You can't always trust a product that claims to be safe or all natural. Even if the FDA discovers that a supplement might contain drugs, the product will often stay on shelves. The agency will, however, post a public health notice on its website. These have included over 250 warnings about sexual enhancement supplements. Taller has used these consumer notices as the basis for his legal action. But in these cases, he's not acting on behalf of victims injured by tainted supplements. Instead, his claims are about false advertising, and the money goes to his client, Outlaw Laboratory. Here's how Towler's legal strategy works. 
Outlaw sells what they say is a truly all-natural sexual enhancement supplement. It's called TriSteel. Outlaw says that other dick pills that claim to be all-natural but secretly contain drugs have taken sales from TriSteel. Now Outlaw is demanding payment for its alleged loss of sales. But here's the reason so many people are mad at Towler and Outlaw. Rather than going after manufacturers of tainted pills, they largely target small businesses who sold them. Why not go after the distributors? We've probably sued five or six distributors that we've been able to trace. Because they're involved in criminal conduct, they're a lot harder to find. And if we're ever going to approach uh, some of the bigger players in the industry, we're gonna have to start with those people we can find, those people that we can definitely hold accountable, and those are brick and mortar retailers. Taller's arguments raise a question. Are retailers also advertisers of every product they display on their shelves, and therefore fair targets of false advertising claims? Some retailers, like Roy Mika, worry that if Taller gets a court to accept Outlaw's argument, it will open the door to copycat lawsuits that could target many mainstream products outside the world of dick pills. If the court sides with Outlaw Company, you're going to see a lot of this business is closing down because we have no control of what do you have inside this package, as an example of the candy. We don't know what they put on this product. Mark Poe's San Francisco law firm heard about Outlaw's legal actions and offered to defend a group of 28 stores for free. From my understanding, if there's anything that you're not supposed to have, usually they send you a letter from like FDA saying you're not allowed to sell these products. Uh, like a recall. A recall, right? And Outlaw, I guess that's a company you'd never heard of before? No, they just send us a letter saying, okay, you can settle or we will take you to court. I hesitate only slightly to use the word scam, but I'll use it. The scam uh, kind of runs in two phases. First, they send out the demand letter. If the recipients of the demand letter don't cough up the couple of grand, then Outlaw tends to sue them. And then it goes through another round of extorting settlements. And if they are settling these for between $2,000 and $5,000, and they've settled hundreds, I suspect it's probably over 1,000. You know, we're talking millions of dollars that have been pinched out of these stores a couple of grand at a time. All of our clients, they're immigrants. English is not their first language. And so you can imagine that particularly for that community, when they receive a demand letter from a Los Angeles law firm threatening the ruin of their business, unless they cough up a couple of grand, unfortunately, most of them have coughed up the couple of grand. I don't know what that guy's smoking, but I find it really offensive when other lawyers believe that I am attacking immigrants. I'm the child of immigrants myself. And it's not like I'm going through Oh, let's find all the immigrants and let's just sue the immigrants. Sometimes I even tell uh, some defendants counsel that I'm talking to, they should be thanking us because uh, someone else uh, could get injured from these and, and in which case their liability would be much greater. Of course, you don't see it that way when you're sued. For a court to consider Outlaw's claims that stores are participating in false advertising, it would need to accept Outlaw's assertion that these stores are selling mislabeled pharmaceuticals. But it turns out that proving this isn't easy. It's not like there's a single company making all of these dick pills and filling them with drugs. What actually happens is that the empty packaging for many of the most common sexual enhancement supplements gets purchased online from China. Then the packages get filled by an unknown number of entities. Finally, the pills show up in stores around the country, and until recently, on Amazon and Walmart's website. To show how easy it is to get into the dick pill business, we ordered a sample of empty rhino packaging from Alibaba. Now, if we wanted to, we could fill them with oregano, or pop rocks, or dirt. We could also fill the pills with natural herbal supplements, as the labels advertise, or pharmaceuticals, both of which are sold on Alibaba. We also bought pre-filled pills from two different New York corner stores. The packaging on these products was exactly the same. But when we opened the pills, it was evident there was inconsistency between the contents, colors, and textures. To know for sure what's in any sexual enhancement product, you'd have to test it. But Towler and Outlaw don't test samples from every store they pursue with legal action. Instead, Outlaw largely relies on photos taken by their own investigators to show that a store carried boner pills in packaging in which the FDA, at one point, found drugs. 
I don't think there's a need to test every single product from every single store because that would be prohibitive. We have to rely on what the FDA has done. But the FDA's own testing shows that not every sample of products they've warned about actually contained drugs. In fact, when the FDA tested two batches of Rhino 7, a supplement on its warning list, the agency found no pharmaceuticals in half of the samples. So it's entirely possible that some stores outlaw is suing never even sold tainted pills. While some judges have allowed Outlaw's claims to proceed, the company has also suffered some setbacks. In five cases, judges granted stores motions to dismiss Outlaw's claims. And one judge even said Outlaw appeared to be shaking down mom-and-pop stores. But Outlaw doesn't have to win at trial to make money. All the company needs is a consistent stream of settlements from stores that want to avoid the hassle and expense of court. And Outlaw is still filing suits against stores as recently as June 2019. Who is Outlaw? Who runs it? It's two partners, and uh, I don't know how many employees they have, but they have several uh, manufacturing entities and supplement entities. They actually have a very good, big following online. Other than that, <laughs> to be honest with you, I don't know too much about them. Here are some things we do know about Outlaw Laboratory. The company is owned by Texas entrepreneurs Sean Lynch and Michael Ware. The pair once co-owned another company called TF Supplements that Lynch founded and Ware joined in 2016. TF Supplements had its own history of legal problems with product safety. It's a popular supplement that's supposed to build muscle. We're just trying to get big. Stevenson tells us his eyes were turning yellow and he constantly suffered from fatigue. The supplements were marketed on the internet by a company in Galveston called TF Supplements. At one point, TF Supplements settled a lawsuit for selling a product that caused a bunch of people liver damage, right? They, TF is a retailer. So they, they carry products uh, from different people that, and in this particular case. Similar to the retailers Correct. that are a corner store that they're Correct. pursuing legal action against now. Correct. In court filings, TF denied wrongdoing in the liver damage case. But this wasn't their only questionable product. TF appears to have sold the same kinds of sexual enhancement products that its owners are now suing other retailers for carrying. Sometimes these products were listed as in stock on the TF website for almost a year after the FDA warnings were issued. During this time, in the fall of 2016, TF's co-owners launched Outlaw Laboratory, their own line of supplements. Which brings us, finally, to TriSteel, Outlaw's own sexual enhancement supplement. TriSteel is a natural male enhancement product. I know that their product is sold in all 50 states. Um, and that's pretty much it. It's sold in brick and mortar stores in all 50 states? Or I don't think just... it's sold in brick and mortar stores, uh, stores at all. I'm not sure that it is. In filings, Outlaw said they started selling TriSteel in October 2016. But they've given contradictory statements on where it was available. At some points, they said TriSteel was sold in retail stores. But in different court documents, Outlaw said the pills were only available through their website. The first record we could find of TriSteel's existence online was from October 2017. Two months prior to this, the company was collecting evidence against stores in California. And two months after TriSteel appeared on Google, Outlaw was sending demand letters, saying stores could be held liable for four years' worth of damages. So to recap, as far as we can tell, Outlaw started preparing for legal actions against retailers before TriSteel was even available online. Just months later, the company started demanding money. The outlaw cases weren't Taller's first sexual enhancement lawsuits. Previously, he used a similar legal strategy on behalf of a product called Powerful Desire. That supplement was made by a company that came into existence just over a month before it started filing suits against adult novelty stores selling dick pills. A fact that led defendants to allege in court that the company was formed for the purpose of filing lawsuits. Towler eventually stopped filing claims on behalf of Powerful Desire and started working for Outlaw Laboratory, which had launched over a year earlier. Neither Outlaw nor Powerful Desire's owners responded to questions about how quickly they started filing suits after their own products became available. Towler did say that Outlaw's owners knew the producers of Powerful Desire, 
and that Outlaw had taken over Powerful Desire's legal claims using their product, TriSteel. We suspect Outlaw's TriSteel product was created for the sole purpose of fostering this litigation um, against, against the stores. In an email, Taller said Poe's allegation was demonstrably false. But he didn't provide documentation showing that TriSteel was sold before Outlaw began investigating stores. Poe isn't just defending his clients. He's made Outlaw the defendant in a countersuit on behalf of stores targeted by Outlaw. And the judge in the case said he found Poe's argument that Outlaw could be extorting stores convincing enough to proceed. Poe is now arguing that any store who received a similar demand letter from Outlaw should be represented in the suit. We concluded Outlaw Laboratories was in fact violating the federal statute, the RICO statute, engaging basically in a scheme of mail fraud. Neither of Outlaw's owners agreed to appear for an interview, citing concerns for their safety. In an email, an Outlaw representative said its owners had sold tfsupplements.com in 2018 and would not comment on their marketing and sales strategies for TriSteel or how much they'd made from settlements. They also described the store owners Outlaw is suing as criminals who don't care about public safety. If their real goal is to prevent the sale of these products to protect the public health, they're going about it in the least effective, but mind you, the most profitable way. Is Outlaw paying you hourly or do you get a percentage of, of settlements? I can't answer that. Okay. That's a privilege. So you can't say if the more settlements you get, the more you're paid. Correct. While Taller is the lawyer listed on Outlaw's initial federal lawsuits, over time the company has worked with different firms across the country. In the case of Shabby's store in New York, the demand letter came from a firm called Josh P. Mooney Paltzik. In an email, Taller said he wasn't involved with Outlaw's legal activities in New York. But the return address on the demand letter sent to Shabby's store in Brooklyn was Taller's firm in Los Angeles. Josh P. Mooney Paltzik didn't respond to a request for comment. And in an email, Toller said it was news to him that his firm appeared on the envelope. What do you want to say to the people who are bringing this against you? It's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's really wrong. <laughs> While Poe is defending the San Diego stores for free, if he wins the class action suit against Outlaw, his firm would receive 20% of the settlement. Could you get very, very rich if this goes your way? Um, no, just because if we get a huge judgment against Outlaw, they're going to disappear, claim bankruptcy. They are likely to get away with it, at least to the extent they've gotten away with it thus far. Our goal is just to put a stop to it. 